Shane Van Gisbergen didn't win in his second career start at Indianapolis, and people are celebrating that as a win for the sport of NASCAR. So if you're not aware, Shane Van Gisbergen obviously went out and won his first career start in the NASCAR Cup Series, something that's only ever been done once before in the modern era before he did it. It's impressive. It's never been done, uh, you know, at least in recent memory. It's something that we don't typically see. Typically when people come into NASCAR, they struggle because they can't get used to ovals or with the old Gen 6 car, it was definitely more into the hands of the Cup regulars versus a road course ringer. Instead, Shane Van Gisbergen comes into Chicago, is fast all weekend, and ends up winning the race because it was honestly the perfect storm for him to be able to perform at the level that he did and there's nothing wrong with that he took advantage of the situation and absolutely delivered for himself his team and drove his stock in nascar through the roof just an absolutely meteoric rise we already knew he was a good race car driver at least those of us have paid attention he's a three-time australian supercars champion he's a multi-time race winner down there he's won in basically every discipline he's ever got behind the wheel and the guy's an absolute wheel man so it's not crazy to see him win at the cup level but to hear the amount of people celebrating the fact that he only finished 10th on Sunday at Indianapolis is so bizarre. It's all these industry people going back and forth and fans alike that are just pumped that he only managed to finish 10th in his second career cup start. You know who else has finished back-to-back -to -back top 10s in their first two career cup starts? Terry Labonte. Hasn't been done since then. I don't know if you guys know this. That's a really long time ago. We're talking literally four decades back that this happened the last time. And people are like, oh, he didn't win. So see, he can't just come over here and beat our guys uh, on any Sunday. I, I mean, I don't think he said that. I don't think anybody has said that. We know Shane Van Gisbergen's a good race car driver. I don't think that's out of the question. But to be like, oh, well, he said that he could come over here and win at any time. He didn't say that. And everybody gets hung up on what he said at Chicago after he won there, basically saying that he and his supercar friends could come over and do exactly what he did at Chicago. Emphasis here on what he did at Chicago. Again, the perfect storm. A guy that's already used to driving a big body stock car on a street circuit. He doesn't have to get used to the walls. Everybody in the NASCAR side had never driven on anything like that. SVG was already very comfortable getting through those corners, getting around the track with the walls right there. He understood the dangers. He was able to put his car in the best place possible. He also did a great job in varying track conditions, going from wet to damp-ish. Took advantage of that as well. He already has driven a car that's somewhat similar to what he drove down in Australia, that being the Gen 7 Cup car. Sequential gearbox, obviously it's heavier, horsepower is a little bit higher. It's relatively in the same region as what he typically drives. So what he did in Chicago is not crazy. And guess what? He probably could get other guys from or from Australia to come to Chicago under the same circumstances and do exactly what he did. And everybody gets hung up on that. Oh, after he only finished 10th and Brody Kostecki came home, I believe in 22nd on Sunday, everybody was like, see, he and his supercar buddies can't just come over here and win these races and finish in, top, finish in the top 10. Well, I mean, he finished in the top 10 in the second career start. Sure, he started 8th, ended up finishing 10th. Brody Kostecki would have started 11th had he not wrecked in qualifying. He ends up starting at the back of the pack and drives up and finishes the last car in the lead lap, but likely would have competed for a top 10 finish there at the end just because of where he qualified. Obviously, 8 of the top 10 cars that started the race finished in the top 10 at the end of the race. So track position was key and passing was at a premium on Sunday at Indianapolis. But everybody getting hung up on the fact that the international drivers didn't perform as well, I guess, as people expected. It's just a really bizarre isolationist type of mentality that I just truly don't understand. Door Bumper Clear this week made a big deal about SVG only finishing 10th. Again, only finishing 10th. He has more top 10s this year than Ryan Priest, the same amount of top 10s as Harrison Burton and both Eric Almarola, who are in much better funded rides than what he was in, and have raced here full time on tracks that he shouldn't be able to compete on. But even looking outside of that, Brody Kostecki, very competitive lap times in qualifying, and in practice, a little bit of practice that he did get. And then if you look at his lap averages during the race, he had very competitive lap times again. But people get so hung up on the finishing order. Sure, Jensen Button had a pretty not great day. Finished 28th, uh, didn't look very competitive for the most part. Got Ricky, Ricky Stenhouse was out here trying to be Team America, and he was just taking out anybody that wasn't American. He was just headhunting out here for for anybody that did not fly the stars and bars well nope don't want to say stars and bars stars and stripes 
Because, although he does come from a state that I think still uses stars and bars. Alright, whatever. Doesn't matter. Breaking Gen House was fully focused on cruise missling into anybody that was not a regular in this series and was an international driver because he took out Jensen Button, he took out Kamui Kobayashi, and everybody's like, oh, Kamui Kobayashi didn't look that great either. I mean, he had pretty good lap times there at the end. He put on fresher tires late in that stint, and he, over the last five laps, had a really high uh, five lap average, and he looked competitive. You just strictly look at the lap times. But I think everybody got all bought into Dale Jr.'s hype about how great his test was at VIR, which I hadn't heard anything else other than what Dale had said, and clearly he was a little bit in over his head, but again, it's not unexpected for a guy that's never driven a full-body stock car like that before. He's driven things that are maybe somewhat similar, but nothing anywhere near what a cup car is. He comes home 33rd, and was respectful enough, respectable enough. Mike Rockefeller comes from 24th, and everybody in seemingly the NASCAR industry that has this isolationist mentality is like putting a feather in their cap celebrating this, and I don't understand that, because personally, I just wanna see good race car drivers drive race cars at any opportunity that they get, and if they can do it at a high level, that makes it even better. And that's what Shane Van Gisbergen's doing, that's what Brody Kostecki's doing, that's what all these guys are trying to do. They're just good race car drivers that wanna come drive other things. At least they're venturing out and trying other things. Most NASCAR drivers don't wanna race anything that isn't cup. Sure, you have some guys that are going down and racing super late models, doing some late model racing here and there, and then you have your dirt guys that are out there trying to race dirt as much as possible, but then you have a ton of guys too that are just like, ah, no, I have no interest in going to another major series. Nobody from NASCAR is going down and racing in the Australian Supercar Series. They probably get their asses handed to them if we're being completely honest. Why? Because it's a completely different car and completely different circuits than what they're used to racing on. Which brings me to the point of, of course these guys struggled on a track at Indianapolis, which they've never been to. They've seen it on the simulator, sure. But these cup guys already have two races under their belt, one race with this car. They're going back to a road course that they're more comfortable on than Chicago. So you already know that they're going to have this level of confidence that gets raised up. Even Michael McDowell talked about it on Denny Hamlin's podcast when he said that he took you know, offense to SVG being able to come and beat them so easily, basically. So you knew cup guys were going to have this you know, amplified driving style of wanting to be competitive and they're already going to be fired up so of course like the cup guys were always going to be better this weekend you still have a guy making his second career start and a bunch of guys making their first or second jensen buttons uh you know situation his third career start but it's not crazy that they didn't win and the fact that people are celebrating the fact that they didn't win is just bizarre i don't understand it uh, personally, I just want to see guys go out there and drive race cars. I want to see more of these crossover type of things happen. I think it's good for motorsports in general. Hurts nobody, good for everybody. So make that keep happening. But to celebrate it is just odd to me. And Shane Van Gisbergen goes out on Friday night at IRP, qualifies 28th in the Truck Series race, his first oval pavement race ever, and finishes 19th, likely has a top 15 finish if he doesn't adjust his truck out of contention, and that's just him not knowing because he's never driven a truck before and really needed to tell the team what adjustments that he needed. So he ends up finishing 19th. Super respectful again because he ran a really clean race. Um, and people are like, oh yeah, you see, he's gonna have a ton to learn. Of of course he's going to have a ton to learn. I don't think he's ever said that he doesn't have a ton to learn. At the same time, if you take any of those guys, you know, and put them down in supercars, they're going to struggle really bad. Kyle Larson's not going to win a supercars race. Joey Logano, not doing it. Kyle Busch, not doing it. Not doing it in their first start, not doing it in the second start, probably not even doing it in their first season. I can almost guarantee he's not doing it in their first season. So yeah, it, it's just weird to have this isolationist mentality and this like weirdly high level of like Kenny Powers patriotism where you can only have what seemingly American drivers win. It's very odd. This isn't your granddad's NASCAR anymore. The sports expanded upon the borders and, you know, outside of the, you know, the continental United States. There's people that are paying attention across the world now and guys that want to come drive here. And that's good for the sport because it's going to bring more eyes in and eventually it's going to bring more money in. So yeah, maybe we just celebrate that the fact that people want to come over here and run NASCAR because this wasn't going to happen 10 years ago. People would have laughed at the idea of that. Every now and then you'd get somebody come over, Juan Montoya, and that's just because that dude just loves to race cars. You have Marcus Ambrose that came over. Again, had some success here as well. Dario Franchitti tried, but he certainly didn't have former Formula One champs or 
FIA endurance racing champions wanting to come over and attempt this. And now that we do, that's good and it should be celebrated. And we shouldn't celebrate the fact that, you know, they didn't win or that they only got a top 10 or that they weren't competitive enough, even though SVG outran everybody on break or on, um, Doran Clear's podcast outran all their drivers on Sunday. So yeah, I don't know, man. Like, can't we just all be happy and just watch race cars go around the track and like be happy that people want to race here? I don't know. That's just where I stand at on this. Let me know. Are you celebrating the fact that SVG didn't win and that he didn't embarrass the NASCAR guys again? Which again, I still don't think he embarrassed them. He just showed them what the potential of the Gen 7 car is on a street course. And there's nothing wrong with that. It just made all these guys, like Michael McDowell said, get fired up. And that's a good thing because these guys certainly need to keep raising their racing ability. So let me know in the comments what you think about it. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard and Instagram, Twitter, and Threads at BreakHardBlog.